Now, when you quotient the polynomial ring in one variable by the idea generated by an irreducible polynomial, you get an algebraic extension of the field K. And of course, the basic question is, what is its dimension? And can we write down somehow an explicit basis? So this is the exercise I want to solve. More precisely, we suppose that F is an irreducible polynomial in one variable with coefficients in one field. K field. Then, well, the most obvious basis we can pick in the quotient, which is the classes of the monomials 1, x, and all the powers of x until d minus 1, where d is the degree of f. Well, these elements here, these d elements, form a basis. quotient k of x over f, so this is here the idea generated by f, and of course I mean a basis um, as a vector space over k. So in order to prove that these elements form a basis, we have to prove mm. that they are um, independent, linearly independent, and that they are a generating set. So let's start to prove the, f the fact that they generate all the elements. So. generate k of x quotient f. In other words, every element in this uh, quotient can be written as a linear combination of these classes. So let me indicate with the letter capital I the idea generated by f, we pick an element in this quotient, let's call it g, g of x plus i, an element here, in the quotient. Now, we can apply a division uh, with respect to f, so we can write g of x Euclidean uh, division, and we can write this as uh, f times some other polynomial q plus r of x, where the degree of r is strictly less than the degree of f, which is d, or r is equal to zero. In any case, uh, well, modulo f g is congruent to r, or if you want, modulo i, the idea generated by f. So we want to prove that g is generated by these uh, elements. Of course, if r is, uh, is 0, then g uh, is uh, 0 in the quotient, and therefore it's not hard to generate 0. You take all coefficients equal to 0. But in any case, r, uh, r of x, uh, can be written as a linear combination of these monomials.
a combination of, of course, 1, x, and x, d minus 1, just by the fact that the degree of r is uh, less than or equal than d minus 1. And therefore, up in the quotient, so mod i, g, 2. g of x, mod i, 2, can be written as such combination. So this proves that these elements are a generating set. The next thing is to show that they actually form a basis, so they are linearly independent. in k of x quotient by i. So what do we do? We assume that there is a linear combination which is equal to zero. So we suppose that the class of zero is equal to say uh, a zero times the class of one plus a one x plus a d minus 1 class of d minus 1 so these are elements in the field the coefficients of the underlying field of our vector space so this of course can just be uh, rewritten as the class of the polynomial a0 plus a1x plus a d minus 1 x d minus 1 let's give it a name let's call it g of x so this the class of g is equal to the class of 0 in the quotient uh, in other words this means g of x is in the ideal i uh, therefore therefore f divides g or g is itself the zero polynomial so f divides g or g is equal to zero as a polynomial but of course, of course, f has degree uh, d, and g is a polynomial of degree d minus 1. So this is for sure not possible, since the degree of f is strictly bigger than the degree of g. And therefore, we have that g has to be equal to 0, which means that uh, all ai are zero so our relation of these coefficients show that all the um, all these uh, uh, coefficients are zero so the, the the elements here one x x t minus one are linearly independent in kx over i and in particular we therefore prove that these uh, quotient as a vector space over k as dimension d and this is a handy natural basis for this uh, for this vector space